bikes and boats. When we try and speak of God, we're trying to speak of something that we can never fully understand or properly describe. So it's paradoxical that when we are thinking about the spiritual life, the best metaphors are often the ones which are drawn from the concrete experiences of our daily living. And that was very much the case with John Mayne when he was trying to explain what the saying of the mantra was about. One of the metaphors he uses is drawn from his time in the Signal Corps. He thinks of the mantra as like the radar bleep, which is guiding us safely home. So as we say the mantra, we repeat it and repeat it and repeat it and it keeps us on a safe and sure course towards the goal. In another place, he also talks of meditation as like riding a bike. Well, of course, when you're watching someone riding a bike who's very familiar with it and very practiced with it, it looks easy. And so we hear the instructions about how to meditate for the first time, and they sound simple. They are indeed simple. So we expect it to be an easy thing to do. But very quickly we discover that simple isn't easy for us. Just as when the first time we get on a bike, we discover there's a bit of a knack to balancing on those two thin wheels. And even more of a knack in steering it in a straight line on those two thin wheels. And probably what will happen is we'll fall off and we'll get back on again. Probably need some encouragement to get back on again if we've had a bit of a bump. And maybe we continue to wobble for quite a while before it becomes very easy for us and we do it without thinking about it. And so we start to meditate. It isn't as easy as we thought. Maybe we stop. We think, well, this can't be for me. Maybe we are tempted to start again, and maybe we do some stopping and starting for quite a while. Maybe our progress to start with is very wobbly. We're not really sure what we're doing, whether we're doing it properly, whether we're doing it well, whether it's taking us where we want to go. But if we have some fellow meditators, they can be a great encouragement. They can reassure us that falling off and getting on again and wobbling are absolutely normal and part of the journey. And if we first persevere, gradually we discover that meditating becomes natural. It becomes part of life. We don't have to think about it or analyse it. Indeed, we stop thinking about it and analysing it and just doing it. Sometimes it feels like an uphill journey. Sometimes it feels easy. It feels as though we're just taking our feet off the brakes and streaming down the hill. Sometimes it's as though we're riding along a plateau. Another way to think about what it means to meditate and the, the process of meditating day by day each time we sit down is in the metaphor of a canoe on a river. So you could think of it as like paddling a canoe down a river. The dipping of the oars into the water rhythmically one side and, and the other is very like the saying of our mantra. Faithful, steady, rhythmic repetition of the word, listening to it, giving it our attention. And when the canoe's paddling down the river, each time we're in the river, it's going to be different. Maybe today the water's calm, maybe it's reflecting the sun, maybe the scenery along the side of the bank is very pleasant. Perhaps there are trees and spring flowers, and the experience seems very easy and straightforward and pleasant. But on other occasions, or even further on, during one period of meditation, the water begins to be choppy or muddy. It seems to be very disturbed. Maybe the wind starts to blow up and it becomes rather hard work. 
it's much more difficult to keep on saying the mantra. We don't seem to be getting anywhere. Perhaps difficult things begin to emerge into our consciousness, rather like passing down a stretch of the river where there's a lot of rubbish. But if we keep on paddling, then we shall simply paddle past the rubbish. We don't need to stop and look at it and examine it to see what it's like or to haul it on board. We can simply keep saying our mantra and paddling down the river. Because what we're aiming for in our meditation is God. And God is rather like the horizon that's always up ahead of us when we're on the river. So however far we paddle, the horizon is going to be up ahead. And whatever sort of things we're having to pass on the river, whatever's in the river, whatever the condition of the river, whatever the weather's like around us, whatever's there on the bank, what we're really wanting is to be up there, moving towards the horizon. And the way we do that is simply to keep on paddling whatever comes our way, whatever the scenery is. One of the great temptations that we'll come across when we're beginning to meditate is when we come across a sense of real peacefulness. It feels like the fulfilment of the promise of peace that's made in the Gospel. In terms of the river, it's as though it's a balmy afternoon. The sun's shining, the flowers are on the bank, everything's very still. It's so tempting to put up our paddle and to rest in that balmy stillness. But we have warnings about that from the tradition. The tradition calls this the pernicious peace, the dangerous peace. And why is it dangerous? Because it stops us on our journey. Remember, it's the horizon that's up ahead that we want to keep on moving towards. So, if we're wise and we follow that wisdom, we lift our heads again see the horizon, remember what we want, reconnect our attention to the sound of the mantra, begin to listen again, begin to take up a metaphorical paddle and carry on towards the horizon, saying our word, listening to our word, giving it our attention and keeping on with it, returning to it every time we realise that our attention has gone somewhere else.